welcome everybody. So we're just um, waiting for a few more people to join. Um, but thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm Pamela Fennell. I'm a lecturer in Urban Building Energy Modelling in the Energy Institute at University College London, where I specialise in urban scale simulation. I've recently taken over from Professor Rajan Rao as chair of the IBIPSA Education Committee, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this, which is our first seminar for 2023, which is a chance to find out more about the BS 2023 Student Modelling Competition. And I'm very pleased to be joined today by members of the IBIPSA Competition Committee and the BS 2023 uh, Conference Committee. And speaking today, we've got Professor Christina Hopfer. Um, Christina is a full professor of building physics at TU Graz, where she leads the Institute for Building Physics, Services and Construction. She's a chartered engineer, a fellow of the Chartered Institution of Building Services Engineers, a fellow of the International Building Performance Simulation Association. She's a board member of IBIPSA Germany, Austria, um, and she's been a director at large of IBIPSA World since 2014, and she chairs the IBIPSA Communi Communications Committee. And since 2016, she's been responsible for the IBIPSA modelling competition, um, of which this is, uh, I think, the sixth edition. We're also joined by Professor Diane, uh, who's a tenured professor in the School of Architecture at Tsinghua University, where he's co-chair of the Sim Building Simulation Conference 2023. He's the editor-in-chief of Building Simulation and he chairs the IBIPSA China Affiliate and is a fellow of IBIPSA and a chair of China HVAC Society's Building Simulation Committee. Um, and rounding off the panel, um, we have Dr. Xin Zhu, who is a lecturer at the School of Architecture in Southeastern University and a youth member of Building Performance Simulation of China's HVAC Committee. And so in this brief webinar, we're going to start um, with Christina Hopfer, who's going to talk about the aims of the student modelling competition. And then um, Xin Zhu will talk about the um, arrangements for the BS 2023 edition of the competition. And then we'll have questions and answers. So please feel free to put your questions and answers into the Q&A box that you should be able to see as you go along. We've also got upvoting enabled, so if somebody else has already asked a question that you were planning to ask, please just upvote that um, and any that you think are uh, particularly important. And that way we can make sure um, that we take those ones first. So with that, I'll hand over to Christina. Would you like to share your screen, Christina? Thank you very much, Pamela, uh, for the introduction. And welcome everyone to this webinar on the student modeling competition. I hope you can see my slide. Please confirm. Excellent. So my name is Christina Hopfer and I'm the chair of the communication committee in IBIPSA and I'm really pleased to talk a little bit about the aim of the modeling competition in general. First of all, I would uh, like to introduce you to, um, oops, that was too fast, to this year's um, competition committee. Um, so the competition committee is always set together from members of IBIPSA. And you can see here on the student modeling competition, a list of eight participants. So these eight people will be the judges of the next modeling competition. And the judges are partially from within IBIPSA community. So this year's representing Australia, the Netherlands, Italy, Germany, and Austria, as well as from when, within the building simulation host. So you also have here four members representing um, the building simulation conference team, um, the conference taking place in China, Shanghai, from the 4th to the 6th of September, where also the winners of this year's competition will be announced. 
Yeah, so what is the aim of the modeling competition? Our aim is, first of all, to encourage the involvement of the younger generation with building simulation. We also would like to raise awareness of the importance that simulation has and also the difficulties and challenges that you will face when using simulation. We also want to foster collaboration and networking between different universities, affiliates uh, within the ABIPSA community, and in particular also to engage the younger generation of building modelers within the ABIPSA community, which is why since recently we started to invite the finalists to the ABIPSA conference to attend and present their work. So it's really important that this is kind of a networking activity. So not that you just participate and submit something, but also that you get to know us, get to know the organization and maybe become part of the organization and play a more active role in the future. Just a little bit about history. So ABIPSA conferences date back until 1985. So the first conference took place 1985 in, in, in Seattle, in uh, Washington, in the States. So that means uh, 1985, the first conference, that means the next one will be the 19th conference taking place organized by ABIPSA. In 2009, the modeling competition was established and introduced. So that was the first conference taking place in Scotland, in Glasgow at the time, so the 12th in total, and hosted by Scotland. Scotland invited England to introduce the modeling competition for the very first time. Based on the success of this modeling competition, it became actually then a well-established part of all forthcoming conferences. The challenges of the modeling competition are set partially by the host, partially by the ABIPSA community. And these challenges address every time a very different topic from, for example, ventilation challenges in lab spaces, such as in 2017 in San Francisco, to building retrofit of uh, old constructions, such as uh, 2019 in Rome, Italy. So 2021 was the most recent one, and now we are in 2023 with the conference host in China, um, Shanghai, with the next conference. So before I hand over to my colleagues um, from the conference committee in China, I just like to make you aware of a very important thing. And that is for all of you that the deadline of the submission of this modeling competition is approaching fairly soon. So please bear that in mind. We really hope that with this webinar, we can encourage you all to try to make an entrance. We really look forward to many documents being submitted. Please bear in mind, however, the 15th of February is currently set as the deadline for the final submission. Um, if there is an extension, it will be announced by the conference host in due time, but hopefully we will get many more submissions until the 15th of February. Thank you very much. And with this, I hand over to uh, my colleagues. Thank you, Christina. Zin, would you like to tell us um, some more about the uh, 2023 competition, please? Yeah, of course. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to make a um, brief introduction about the Building Simulation 2023 student competition. This year's student competition topic is the simulation, design, and optimization of a nearly net zero carbon emission building. Um, more detailed information can be found in this website. For this year's competition, the aim of this exercise is to use computer simulation to design and optimize a building to achieve nearly net zero carbon emission. 
In the process of setting the theme of this competition, we considered a various of solutions, including big data analysis, urban energy consumption simulation, and so on. In the end, we believe that building carbon emission is a topic that countries around the world are concerned about at this time. Take this as an analysis goal in this student competition can stimulate everyone's attention to this topic and has practical application value. Given the availability of data, we narrowed down the analysis to a single building. At the same time, carbon, building carbon emissions covers the entire life cycle of a building and includes a lot of content. In order to simplify and ensure the focus of an analysis problem, the optimized content only include the carbon emission during the building operation phase. Many involving the carbon emissions of cooling, heating, lighting, and plug loads. Besides, only electric equipment is allowed in this building. That is, fuels such as coal, oil, or natural gas are not applied in this building. It is really important that each modeling competition include a new challenge. For this year's student competition, participating teams are encouraged to use active measures such as PV, battery, charging pile or ice storage, and passive measures such as fluctuating room temperature, thermal storage in walls, controllable lighting, and other demand side management for carbon reduction, which is caused by cooling, heating, and other uh, and uh, plug loads in the operation phase. At the same time, they should also ensure providing comfortable indoor condition. In terms of methods, we have um, provide dynamic carbon emission coefficients as co optimization constraints. Compared with previous years, the optimal goal this time is new, and the technologies that can be used have not been tried before, including the attempt of demand-side responses. This content gives the context a lot of space for exploration. Entrants are free to propose the heating, cooling, and mechanical ventilation system, but must provide details of this in their report. All entrants must use validated building performance simulation. First, we can take a close look at the building for analysis. The building selected for this competition is the Students' Activity Center of Tongzi University in Jiading Campus in Shanghai, China. The reason for choosing this building is that, on one hand, this building is actually built, and it is also a high-performance green building. During the BS 2023 meeting, it can also be used as a place to visit so that everyone has a more realistic sense of participation. On the other hand, the building was designed by Tongzi University and the information is relatively complete. The selected phase is located on the east side of the main axis of the Jadin campus, on the northeast side of the Zihai Sea system, and on the southeast side of the teaching area. The state core of the base is lush with vegetation, as this picture shows. Compared with coastal cities, Shanghai's total precipitation and rainy days are relatively abundant. The radiation process mainly occurs from June to July, so special attention should be paid to this month in the design. In Shanghai, the southeast and northeast dominate the wind direction throughout the year. The dominant wind direction in summer is southeast, and the secondary dominant wind direction is northeast which is roughly the same as in winter. When designing natural ventilation, the dominant wind direction in summer should be the main direction and the northeast wind should be blocked to a certain extent. Shanghai belongs to the north subtropical monsoon climate. The annual average temperature is about 17 centigrade. 
and extreme weather usually occurs in July or January. The solar radiation in Shanghai is relatively uniform throughout the year. Excluding extreme climates, the annual average temperature is relatively present, and passive designs can be made by properly using solar energy and so on. The best orientation of building in Shanghai is due south. At this time, the solar radiation is evenly distributed throughout the year, which can reduce the summer solar radiation to the greatest extent and ensure the winter solar radiation. The combination between nature ventilation and thermal mass may largely improve the comfort level compared with other passive design technologies used. This is the manuscript of the building's design at this time. Thermodynamic ecological strategies have been considered in the design to achieve high efficiency, energy saving, and land saving. The main measures, including drawing out the wind in the atrium, guiding natural ventilation, shading, and so on. The prevailing vent direction in summer is almost parallel to the building. The building facade is made of white concrete slabs, catering to the southeast orientation of the building, forming a vertical sunshine and natural ventilation system. Setting 45 degree angle louvers on the facade may well guide the wind into the room. In terms of the interior space design, emphasis is placed on the continuation of space to form coherent flow of space sequence. In terms of function, a large number of roaming student independent activity spaces are set up. The slow space of the lecture hall on the ground floor is combined with the entrance and the tower walkway form a continuous space. These have created better conditions for the creating of natural ventilation. The total construction area of the whole building is about 21,000 square meters, of which the above ground part is about 15,000 square meters, and the underground part is about 6,000 square meters. The building covers an area of about 6,200 square meters with eight floors. It contains many functions such as office of the community, a multifunction hall, training loans and art class loans and so on. It is a multifunctional complex that provided spaces for offices, meeting, performances and entertainment services. Considering that the entire building area is relatively large and there are many complex functional spaces, in order to allow students to focus more on creative design and analysis, we adjusted the building spaces for analysis. It should be noted that only the energy consumption and carbon emission of the tower part under the typical annual condition are studied. And the energy consumption of the podium part is not included in the analysis. However, the ventilation channel of the podium and the tower can be used as passive ventilation part. As mentioned, both active and passive measures to reduce carbon, e uh, carbon emission from heating, cooling, lighting, and plug loads during operation should be taken into consideration. Although only the carbon footprint of the tower is analyzed, the roof and elevation of both tower and podiums are available for installation. Other demand side management measures are also welcome to be considered. Some constraints have been listed in the briefing document. These constraints must be followed precisely. Any deviation from these requirements may result in disqualification. The intent to set these limitations is to remove uncertainty when many project parameters 
so that the competitors can concentrate on a specific case on an equal playing field. For example, entrants are free to choose the design for all aspects of the building envelope. If this meets the local standard, referring to the green design standard for public building in Shanghai, the design of the building's envelope for this competition should be within the constraints at the table shoes, which includes the requirements for windows, roof, walls, and so on. This information can be seen in the Appendix B of the briefing document. Other inputs like the value. The typical year value file can be downloaded from the Building Simulation Conference website. The data set is provided in the EPW format. As for the comfort condition, when the zone is occupied, it should be maintained between 18 to 26 centigrade. There are no requirements on unoccupied hours, and also there is no requirement about the humidity. We have made some introduction about the building. More detailed information, such as the floor plans, can be found in the Appendix A of the briefing document. Also, a very detailed file in DWG format can be found on the website, which can help students to build their model. These plans must be followed exactly and norms may not be rearranged. Requirements of the occupancy densities, ventilation and illuminations is shown in the slide. This is a general requirement. However, if students use a demand controlled ventilation system, then the requirement for ventilation in the table can be ignored. If they can keep the Long cell to level less than 1000 1, ppm. Internal heat gains and schedules have also been provided in the document. This slide shows the input for office as an example. Here is the requirement for uh, heat gains, and this is for the schedules. It should be noted that. The internal heat gains and schedules of occupancy and equipment are mandatory. However, if daylighting controls are applied, then the internal heat gains and schedules of the lighting can be adjusted but need to meet the required minimum illumination level as in the previous slide shows. Besides, please pay attention to the dynamic carbon emission factor, which is provided in Appendix E of the briefing document. It can be used to convert the hourly electricity consumption to hourly carbon emissions for different seasons. Please pay attention to this figure. You can find that at different time of the day, the carbon emission factors are quite different. Students may use these kind of advantages to apply different technologies to try it their most uh, um, uh, suitable application. Also, some input was not restricted for the competition. This suggests that some ingenuity may be put into inputs that the design team may decide to vary include the shading the daylight controls, complete HV system, both in the air side and water side can be uh, designed. And also students may design the weather and what kind of renewable energy can be applied in this building. Um, also whether the building use battery or not. From the evaluation criteria, which the students may be curious about, we focus on the accurate and intelligent use of building simulation and adequate use of performance metrics. The design feasibility, carbon emission performance, and robustness of the proposal should be presented. Then participants can use a report to demonstrate this information. Competition submissions can be either individual or group submissions. In case of group, 
a group leader should be the corresponding person, and the total number of team members cannot exceed four. Participants are required to submit a report containing the following sections, including A to L. The report should not exceed 20 pages, excluding references and uh, the annex part. Competitors need to make full use of this 20 pages report to present their results and show their highlights. From the enrollment, all entrants must be enrolled as student, PhD, MSc, BSc, or equivalent at the time of submission. Entrants must upload some documents as a proof of their student state. As for the uh, notification of finalists, following judging by an expert panel, two finalists will be notified uh, notified by June 1st, 2023, and will receive free registration to BS 2023, and up to $2,000 in reimbursed travel expenses. The two finalists will be expected to attend the Building Simulation 2023 conference and to prepare a short presentation and produce a poster for display at the conference. Poster requirement and travel or registration information for the finalists will be provided at that time. Based on the conference presentation and poster, an overall winner will be selected and announced at the conference. Here is the key dates for the student competition. The competition has been announced at December 20 last year. In the coming, February 15, all students who intend to submit will have to notify the BS modeling competition team through this email. The deadline for the submission is May 15. The request report should be sent through email in PDF format to the same email address. Then around June 15 this year, Two finalists will be informed. Then we finally come to the BS2023 conference, which is held during September 4 to 6 of this year in Shanghai, China. In the process of completing the competition, you may encounter some questions and difficulties. Please feel free to contact us and the following email. During the process, please use email for correspondence and try to make your question as concise as possible. All questions and responses will be posted on the student competition section of the BS2023 website. So to save your time, please check the website first. Also, you can find the middle board for team cooperation on our website. You can find team members with different expertise through this, uh, through this platform, such as natural ventilation, uh, natural lighting simulation, human behavior analysis, and so on. You can also see physical photos of the building on the platform, including some ideas and these. You can also communicate on this platform. Well, then, this is all the introduction of the student competition today. Thank you. Thank you, Sin. That was great. Very informative. Um, and it looks like a really exciting project, particularly the chance to, to visit the building as well uh, during the conference is, is very exciting. So I personally look forward to doing that as well. Um, at the moment, we just have one question in the chat, although I have um, a couple of other questions that I would um, that I would like to ask. Um, so we've had one question from an attendee, which is um, about whether or not the slides will be available, um, the slides that you've just shown um, and where they will be available. Yeah, I think it is available. I will upload them on our website. Brilliant, thank you. So they'll be available after this to, to download yes. as well. 
Um, and I should also say that we will um, that this um, this seminar is being recorded um, and is going to be uh, uploaded to the Ibipsa uh, University YouTube channel. So um, you should I've just put the link for that in the chat. So if you want to look back to the webinar afterwards, um, you will be able to to do that. Um, so, um, a question from me then is uh, perhaps a question for Christina. Do you have a sense from previous competitions of, of how much time uh, the, the different teams have had to put in to their submissions? That is a very good question, Pamela. Um, it is definitely a considerable amount of time that is needed to tackle that challenge or every every conference challenge, which is why we encourage in particular universities and lecturers of building simulation modules to make the brief part of the module so that students have to do the assignment anyway as part of a module participating in a course in an MSc program, for example, and then can use that in order to submit a documentation to the modeling competition. Should this not be the case, then obviously this needs to be done in your private and leisure time, which is still possible because even now in this webinar, a lot of information was provided to you that you actually cannot find within the brief, such as, for example, about the climate constraints and conditions around in the proximity. So this is very valuable information that will save you already a considerable amount of time when you start working on that document. Another point I would like to emphasize, this is a group challenge. So we invite groups of people to participate so that it's not down to just a single person to do the work. So please find teams. You can do find teams within your university, but we also invite you to find teams interdisciplinarily uh, within different parts of universities, with different parts of countries. We would absolutely encourage such submission and very much welcome the effort to do that. And obviously, if you do this in a team's effort, um, shared work is always um, in um, decreased workload. So then that's absolutely possible to do. And uh, we also limit application documents to 20 pages in order not to encourage people to write a lot because this is not a writing assignment, it's a modeling assignment. So we look really uh, at the um, limitations that the students are aware of, what they did and um, the assumptions that they made. And that will be very important to us when judging those submissions. Thank you, Christina. Can I just ask a follow-up question to that? And then uh, I have a question uh, from the audience that I'll bring in. Um, is it just the report that's submitted or are students uh, expected to submit the models and are the models assessed? We won't be looking at the models. We just look at the reports. Should there be any queries, however, we will take the liberty to approach the group on hindsight and request the models as well. But the challenge is in a first step for the students to put all the necessary information in that document that they submit. And should there be any additional information such as uh, like tables of values, etc. That is why we allow to use an appendix so that the core information is within the 20 pages and additional information might be added at the very end. But please don't rely on this because in the first step, we will just look at the 20 pages. So try to really put the core information in that. And yes, so the, the submission of the document brief is that what we will judge. Thank you. That's very clear. Um, a question from the audience now um, is about the availability of information about the building materials. Um, where can students find that? Yeah, we have offered some recommended material in the briefing document, um, but this material are only for reference. So students can consider to replace this material uh, if they only if they can uh, meet the requirement I just mentioned in the slides. Yeah. 
Thank you, Zin. That's great. Um, so is there another question from the audience? Is there a list of participants in the competition um, that people can view? How, how do you see what's going on with the competition? We won't be able to share the list of participants to you because we can't do that. Um, we encourage people to step forward as teams already. So don't step forward individually and say you're looking for team members. This is not how this works. You really have to find team members prior and submit as a as a group. And the deadline, as I, as I mentioned before, on the 15th of February is the deadline for you to step forward, send an email to the conference host and say, it's our intent to contribute to the competition. So it's not the deadline for your report. It's just that you tell us we want to be part of this. And that is really important for us to get an overall idea of how many people will participate. We can't publish the list. What we will publish in the end, however, are the two finalist teams because the two finalist teams will be invited to Shanghai to present their work. And then at the very end, after the conference, there will be another webinar where we invite those finalists again to present their work to the wider community. Other than that, we will keep the information of who has applied confidential. Thank you, Christina. That's great. Um, Another question from me, this time to Da, um, is to ask if you have uh, any particular words of advice for participants that you'd like to share now. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe Professor. Can you go ahead? Yeah. Okay, um, because this is an international competition, so we um, don't want the code in Shanghai because of the language limited in the communication. So we have uh, put all the limitation in our briefing document. Um, if mm, some requirement uh, have not been listed in the briefing document, then the student can decide uh, this kind of things. Uh, for example, as the uh, student asked about the uh, ventilation, we have uh, put the uh, 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 ACH about the ventilation in the briefing document. Yeah, and, and this can be used for the uh, reference. And under the energy code, I think because our aim is to uh, make a low carbon emission building, so uh, the only uh, energy code requirement uh, you should um, pay attention to is the requirement about the uh, building envelope. Yeah, uh, I think this is all about my uh, uh, response. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. may I have some additional information for this? It's a very good question to have because the uh, code in China is quite different from the other countries. So uh, we will provide some basic uh, requirement uh, in the documentations. And, and if there are any further um, discussion or uh, is there any questions on, on the uh, code or other issues, we set up uh, one a mirror, uh, just as Xin mentioned, it's a mirror board uh, for the teams who participate in this uh, um, competition. And if you have any questions, you can ask there and we will have a, a group discussion on this and give you the feedback. So uh, don't worry about the, the question. And uh, if you have any question, you can just uh, ask us. Yeah, that's uh, my uh, 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 comments. Who, whoever asked this question is spot on. This is really one of the challenges of every competition because we want you to look at the challenges and the constraints in, in each of the countries, which is why we post the building usually in the country the conference takes place. And it encouraged all of you to familiarize yourself with the climate conditions, with the building regulations, with constraints about materials and everything. And um, yes, information of this will be published on the website, but please um, look at this before you start modeling. Thank you. 
Um, I have uh, another administrative question now, which is, should everyone in the team enroll or does one person enroll for the whole team? So we usually expect the teams um, to uh, let us know all the participant names because what we will require from all of you is a certificate that you are still enrolled at a university, whether that is as, a, as an MSc or a PhD student, it doesn't matter, but this is not a practitioner competition. It is really intended for students. So MSc, bachelor, PhD, um, that doesn't matter, but we need proof of evidence. And that was mentioned already by my two colleagues beforehand. That's really important. Is there, uh, if there is a situation where you find out that you've submitted just a team of three and there's a fourth member joining the team later on and you think that person has been very influential to this and you would like to add them on hindsight we can certainly talk about it we won't be very strict with this because we find that really good if you find rather more people to collaborate than less but again we will require proof of enrollment at a university thank you christina um can I uh, ask another question from the audience, um, which is, are there any defined specifications for taking a base case um, for analysis to compare simulations with a base case? Anything that's not defined in the brief? So Zin, is there a requirement to create a base case and to compare that with the um, reduced carbon um, solution that is proposed. So I would, um, I can say something to that, but I would prefer actually if my two colleagues would actually <laughs> respond to this because you've chosen the building and um, you might be in a much better position to answer that question. Yeah, uh, I think it's a good question for this. Uh... Do you should we uh, provide one baseline? Actually, uh, uh, I think uh, we uh, currently we don't prepare the baseline case for analysis to to help you to compare if this your um, optimized work uh, is uh, far optimized than the baseline or not. So, uh, um, but I do recommend maybe you can um, refer to the car a local um, standard. And maybe we can provide some information about this, uh, the requirement from the local design code. That is uh, uh, quite um, applicable uh, for the local building. And uh, actually they have a lot of uh, turnover of the optimization and to get the code that is more uh, suitable with the current uh, climate and also adapt with the current uh, uh, building um, function. So. Uh, I think this may help, and uh, uh, I don't know the promise uh, uh, competition if we provide the uh, a base case or not. Um, but I think uh, the if the promise one, previous competition provide, maybe we can also provide the same one. I would add to that absolutely correct. It's it's not the challenge this time to um, look at, for example, monitor data. We had that in the past where we sort of provided more data and information on base cases or equivalent cases, or even monitor data and asked students to change the building based on the baseline. It's not the challenge this year. Okay, so really, um, if you are uncertain about the performance of the building, look at um, equivalent data, try to find references to that, but do not worry about um, a base case for analysis in this case. Thank you. Um, another question from the audience um, around how you expect teams to work together um, and whether there is a, a specific application for them to, to use to work together, for example. Um, MS teams or so I think that's one for uh, for Zin and Da. Yes, maybe I can have some comments on it and maybe Xin, you can add some. So uh, it's a very interesting topic for this. I think uh, mm -hmm. it's quite uh, good to have one group to work in together 
and uh, uh, in some of this uh, competition, the, um, the, the students working uh, very close with each other, some working on the architectural part, some working on the mechanical part, and especially in this case, we are focused on the low carbon. It's a way to connect with the electricity uh, panels and how we can use in the demand response uh, way we can reduce the carbon uh, uh, emission. So I think uh, there's a different kind of way for the, the team to work in together. And uh, um, I think the, it's quite free from uh, our side that to say the team, how you can integrate with each other. Um, so uh, maybe Xin, you can add some of your comments. Yeah, because I think uh, this competition is quite uh, comprehensive, I think. So we need uh, students from different, maybe different uh, department of the school, like maybe a building design, um, maybe HVC system, or maybe uh, natural ventilation, something like that. So um, maybe, um, so I think this is why we need people from uh, different background uh, can work together to complete this competition. Yeah, I think this is the meaning. And also we can uh, learn from different uh, uh, people uh, how to work together. Yeah, then I think uh, your talk about uh, is it possible to integrate it? I think just you can find a comfort way to uh, make the competition to uh, complete, I think, uh, any kind of uh, way to work together is acceptable. Yeah, maybe Christina has some comments. I do. <laughs> so in the in the past, um, in particular at the last conference, we used um, Slack uh, workspace for encouraging students to exchange ideas and to collaborate. So this is one example of a workspace where, where people can create a profile and can work together and exchange ideas. So I would encourage the hosts maybe to set up a similar profile such as a Slack space. Um, there are other examples, so I completely leave that up to you, but it, it would be nice to have like such a space where people can come together and, and ask and answer questions. Thank you. Some excellent questions that are leading to suggestions uh, for the panel as well. Which I agree. Very good questions. Thanks all for these fantastic questions and participating. So I think we have no more um, open questions now. So I'd just like to uh, finish by asking the panel if they have any last words of advice. Uh, sorry, before I do that, um, here is one final question. Um, which is uh, whether it's possible to use this test case to test a new building simulation program, which is being developed uh, in the framework of a doctoral thesis and which is intended to be the subject of a scientific article. So I can say something about that. Um, we um, had um, questions like this in the past. And one thing I can say from the perspective of IBIPSA, what is really important to us, if you use such buildings with obviously the agreement of the host because they propose the building, for us, it is very important that you cite IBIPSA, that you cite the modeling brief within your thesis, within any applications, within any publications, because this brief has been developed as part of the conference with IBIPSA and the conference host, so you will have to reference that document. Thank you. Xin Da, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yes, uh, because it's a, a, a real building, not a, a virtual building. A, you know, real building in virtual form. Uh, so uh, like uh, Christina just mentioned, we uh, do necessary to uh, refer to the Ibiza and also this competition. And uh, uh, Xin, we are also, uh, maybe you can also double confirm this with the design design institute and uh, to confirm if it's uh, okay to uh, be used in the other way as a usage use case 
Yeah, we will uh, note this uh, in the analysis in the website. Yeah, uh, first in the briefing document from the EBITSA side, we have a, a requirement about sub, uh, submitting a report to other conference. Um, uh, it is said that you must acknowledge the EBITSA uh, BS2023 modeling competition in this uh, paper. Um, in another way, maybe we will contact Professor uh, Pang because uh, she offered this, uh, the information about this building to us. Um, maybe we can get, his, uh, get her permission about um, the using of uh, the information of this building in the uh, uh, foreign. Yeah, uh, the uh, update information, we will upload them in the website. Thank you. I'm going to take one final question uh, from the audience now, which is about um, the environmental conditions. Um, do we need to take into consideration the relative humidity levels of occupied hours apart from dry bulb temperature? Yeah, currently we have no requirement about the uh, arch level of occupied hour. Um, yeah, just uh, on the uh, requirement for the dry bu uh, bulb temperature, yes. Yeah, I, I would add, okay, um, I don't, um, I would say really inform yourself what is necessary for the type of simulation that you have to conduct and dry bulb temperature is most of the time not sufficient on its own. Thank you. Um, we'll make, um, I think we'll make the questions and answers available on the website as well here so that um, people can look, um, look at those later for, for clarity. Um, so I would like to just close now by asking the panel in turn um, to, if they have any final words um, of advice that they would like to, to give. So Christina, can I come to you first? Of course. Well, thank you, first of all, everyone for participating in this webinar and thanks in particular to Pamela and Velvet for organizing it. I think that's been um, a real great initiative. I'm really pleased we are doing this the first time, a webinar prior to the competition, prior to the conference. I can only encourage you all, you cannot lose. It's just nothing to lose. You can only win. You win experience, you win connections, you win um, knowledge. And if you are one of the better teams, you will even be invited to come to China and present your work and you will sort of meet the community. So please step forward, try it and be part of this competition. It's a great initiative from within NIBEBSA and the conference host together. So we look forward to all your submissions. Thank you. Um, and Xin, um, would you have any final words of advice? Yeah, I just want to say, please enjoy the competition and uh, enjoy the process. And welcome to China, to Shanghai. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Da. Yeah, just like uh, Christina and Xin just mentioned, just uh, a lot of work, quite challenging, but uh, um, quite uh, interesting process and uh, you could working with a very good teammate and uh, get some exciting output and uh, good news is that uh, china's um, travel permission has already all the travel restriction has been lifted so it's quite easy to come to china and uh, visit the mega city of shanghai so looking forward to meeting all of you and uh, see your um, outstanding um, uh, submission of the competition. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Da. So it just remains for me to say thank you very much to the panel. Um, that's been extremely interesting and informative. Um, and thank you very much to the audience um, for such insightful questions. Um, this is our first seminar for 2023. Um, the Education Committee is going to be organising a series of seminars focusing on urban scale simulation this year. We just have a few 
last dates to confirm and we'll be announcing the whole series shortly so do look out for that um, in the LinkedIn group and in the communications uh, from IGRIPSA but thank you very much. Thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you.